I'm Heather from Hia Buck Tubes, and today is if blank bothers you, here's a recommendation that avoids that thing that you're trying to avoid. I have a few different specifics that came up over and over again when I asked this on Instagram. And the biggest general consensus is we don't want any surprise tragedy. We don't want to read about the worst thing that ever happens to a person, especially not if you're advertising it as a safe romance or a rom-com or a light fluffy contemporary whatever it is if you are not advertising it as this is going to make you cry this is going to be hard hitting this is going to deal with difficult topics we don't like that we like to know what we're getting <laughs> And specifically, a lot of times when we are reaching for romance, we want something that's going to make us feel good. And that can be deep, right? That can have interesting characters and powerful discussions and it can have people that feel real, but it doesn't need to have surprise tragedy. Which in general, that is very much how I feel and I try really hard to make sure that the, if there is something heavier for a content warning that I let you know, my memory is not perfect. I do try to always include this in my Goodreads reviews. I'm not trying to trick you <laughs> into reading something that is going to make you sad. <laughs> Generally speaking, the books that I like usually kind of fit into this category anyways, but we're going to go with some specific ones. And as much as possible, I did kind of pick ones that applied to all of the categories. So if they have one that directly opposes another category, I will try to let you know when I mention it. So the first one is No Baby, No Surprise Pregnancy. And my first recommendation would be The Enforcer by Katrina Jackson. This is a lighter than usual mafia romance. It is a black main character and a Italian in Italy mafioso. It is second or third book depending on how you do the series order in a series, but you can read it as a standalone. Neither one of them wants kids. He's submissive. They are both fat characters and they are both okay with that. If you wanna see, especially a fat black woman who is type A, take charge, doesn't want to deal <laughs> with all of people's problems but can't just ignore them either. If you wanna see her just get loved on and the two of them love each other and make each other's lives so much better with a guy who is a little bit of a himbo type, he kind of talks about how he doesn't like to be the one making decisions. He doesn't like to have to think about what he should do. He kind of likes to be pointed in a direction and told what to accomplish and then be told good job at the end of it. And it's just a really sweet romance with, you know, some killing. <laughs> Next one is Zenny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. This is one that I think if you like The Enforcer, you'll like Zenny. And if you like Zenny, you'll like The Enforcer. This is a marriage of convenience because she is grieving for an aunt that just died. They actually meet at the aunt's funeral. And there are some family secrets and some complicated family dynamics that get explored. And he had a awful kind of abusive, if I'm recalling correctly, father that does get mentioned but he is a Scotsman I believe and she again is a fat black woman and they are actually both bisexual and I think they are both fat and they don't want kids and they they are so sweet to each other the banter the care the care this man really is just so considerate he's con a considerate love interest really really sweet then I have The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. This one, they are already taking care of children and they don't want to have their own, if, again, I'm recalling correctly. But this is such good writing. This is a delight. When I tell you that this is for people who don't always have overlapping tastes, but they will like this one. Again, this is a black woman in a interracial relationship. I guess I accidentally <laughs> picked three of those, but she is a witch and she's living in our world. So she's in England and she does have a very lonely childhood, but that's because of adults doing the best they can and trying to avoid magical mistakes and there's curses and there's all sorts of things. So it's not from a bad place, but it does result in her being very lonely. And then she gets this call to come and tutor these young witches that are together and they need help controlling their magic. And witches are not supposed to be together because it attracts magic. And then you have a lot of magical mishaps and you have to clean up 
everything so that the public doesn't know and burns the witches. And she has a romance with the grumpy librarian guardian who is just so gruff but he's so protective. He's not cruel, he is not mean, he's not particularly welcoming towards her but he is reasonable and he's not welcoming because he is protective. He wants to take care of these children and he is not sure that they need her and that he's not sure that this is a good idea. The hijinks ensue. It's just fun. It's fun. It's sweet too. It's poignant. I feel like you have will have that emotional connection to all of the characters. But ultimately, if you want a feel good book that is excellently written, like I cannot tell you how much the hype is deserved for this one. Top tier. Top tier. Then I have dark romances, but no sexual assault specifically between the hero and the main character. I am someone that kind of likes my dark content to be dubious consent, not full out assault. I don't enjoy that, but in the realm of dubious consent. However, I have some that either don't have that at all or have specific circumstances, which I'll explain. First one is Maro by Trisha Wolf and Bryn Weaver. This is rival serial killers and she's kind of obsessed with him. I know her family was a victim of a serial killer and I can't remember if her mom was assaulted before she died or if it was just the graphic death, but the main character was not, I know that. And also there is an assault between the main character and the hero. She's pretty sunshiny and he is not and they are both professors at this university and they are rival serial killers and there's a connection between them that he is not aware of and I just loved it. <laughs> it was a really fun dark romance so I feel like if you want your dark romance to be more the serial killer aspect and obviously as usual in a romance book if they are your main character and your love interest usually they're killing people who are predators in some way because we like that justification to be able to still like the character just a fun dark romance honestly next one is the tyrant alpha's rejected mate by kate c wells kate c wells writes dark romance or even like hard-hitting romance in a way that I am just addicted to. I've read all of her books. <laughs> Tyrant Alpha's Rejected Mate, we have a disabled and latent wolf shifter. So she is disabled, but also she has never shifted into a wolf before. And then she realizes that the alpha is her mate. She shifts, she fights, she loses badly, all the things. The alpha rejects her. And the alpha is not doing it to be cruel or anything. He does not recognize her as his mate. And he's just like, well, if she was my mate, I would know. And I feel really bad. Like, I don't know why she's doing this because we're obviously not mates. Um, but my wolf won't let me leave her alone. And I don't know what's up with that. But we're not mates. The old alpha was very abusive. And he is making things better, but things are very much not where they should be. The single women in the pack are not allowed to own cell phones. They're not allowed to go off the of pack land. They're not allowed anything really. And um, she's going to challenge the alpha with these facts. It's just so good. It's so good. <laughs> Next I have Hold by Claire Kent, which this one is dubious consent, but is not assault. So they are on a prison planet. They are both humans and he is a very strong prisoner and one of the guards tells her to find a strong prisoner and give him sex for protection or she's going to get torn apart that day, right? So she chooses him and he protects her and do you be as consent on the sex? But those power dynamics are addressed in the book and also you do kind of get a point where he's like, you know, I'm a terrible person. I took advantage of you. I, I wanted you and, you and I did it. And she's like, yeah, but if I told you no, you wouldn't have. Like you and I both know you would not have forced me. So it's so good. It's my favorite. It's my favorite. And it's the reason why I'm obsessed with Claire Kent. But I just love this trope. And this is by far the best execution of it that I have found. And he's gruff and grumpy and not communicative, but he is never cruel or mean or any of the things. Then I have Redemption by Kenya Wright and this does open up on a domestic violence scene. So our main character and her children are going to escape the father and husband that is abusive and we do open up on that scene and then they are running away and they are going to crash on this guy's property and this guy lost his family due to mafia work. His family was killed and so he's been out of the game for a while. 
and the two of them are going to protect those kids and each other and that abuser is going to get what's coming to him. So the dark content is killing people <laughs> and the abuse but is not between the main character and the love interest at all. They actually have a very sweet relationship and there is not safe for work illustrations in this book so just be careful where you're reading it. <laughs> Next I have no miscommunication. We hate this and it doesn't have to be that, that you know every single thing is completely understood. It's you can't have like a driving force of the book be a conversation that they should have had that they didn't right. So the first one is Catching Him How to Catch an Alpha Number One by Aurora Rose Reynolds. There is a gun scene because they meet when she breaks into his house so if you uh, don't want to read that, then that would be the content warning for this, basically. So some romantic suspense elements also, but they are neighbors. He's going to fall for her instantly. He's going to pursue her. There's not going to be any issues really between them as a couple. They're going to communicate and be sweet to each other. And it's almost slice of lifey as they fall in love. And it's just really cute and I think a good one if you just want to watch a normal couple be a normal couple and not have any of these specifically construed romance book issues. Next one is The Gamble by Kristen Ashley. This one she books a stay at a cabin. The owner of the cabin is there and it's not like a small cabin. It's like a you know large lodge in the <laughs> Rocky Mountains. And there's a storm and he sends her back down the mountain. She never makes it. So he rescues her and they, you know, have forced proximity while he nurses her back to health, etc. She is engaged and she is on this trip specifically to try and figure out if she wants to stay engaged to this guy or not. So there is not cheating. It is definitely, I'm breaking up with you because I'm realizing I'm falling for this person and I wouldn't fall for him if we were what we should be, right? Again, very alpha. <laughs> if you don't like an alpha love interest, you're not going to like this one. Again, some romantic suspense elements. Also, there's a content warning for loved ones that have committed suicide and loved ones that have suffered su sexual assault. So caution on that, but between the couple itself, healthy communication, a fun time. And lastly for this, I have A Walk in the Park by Rebecca Weatherspoon. If you want a sweet palate cleansing hug, where these two are just so sweet to each other and you have puppies and you have, you know, shared dog custody and just two people who have been hurt in the past but are going to be so incredibly good to each other. Again, fat black main character and love interest. Again, no like weird manufactured conflicts. They behave like a normal couple would and it's really sweet. Then I have no medical or sudden surprise medical twists or reveals. I do know that this is probably referring more specifically to contemporary romance, but I didn't do that. <laughs> First one is Paladin's Grace, which is Saint of Steel number one by T. Han Fisher. This has some dark, hoary aspects with the, you know, supernatural bad guys that they're fighting basically. But the couple, so incredibly sweet, it is angsty. They're not gonna like tell each other that they love each other till the very end of the book, basically. But you have a paladin, a knight of a god, and his god actually died. It was, you know, a real god, it died. Nobody knew that a god could die and things went downhill quickly. And he's one of the last surviving paladins who made it through not only their god dying without dying, but also the aftermath. And his mental health and the other mental health of the other paladins is crap. It's not good. <laughs> and then you have just, you know, a regular girl and they cross paths and it is funny and sweet. There's some murder mystery aspects, but they are what they appear to be. Then I have A Deal with a Demon by Chase Verity. This is a demon, but a single mom in our world with kids and she downloads an app and she gets a demon. <laughs> This is house husband demon. He's gonna take care of the kids. He's gonna take care of the house. He's gonna bake cinnamon rolls. He's gonna walk her home from work. He's going to worry about her and be like, you need to not work so hard. And you know, we can like use me. And she's like, no, I'm not using you. It's just sweet. <laughs> it's just sweet. And if you wanna see a struggling single mom get taken care of, yes. 
Then I have To Her Rescue, which is Night Brothers number one by Drea Anderson. This one, she does have a toxic family and he is going to rescue her from that family with this marriage of convenience, basically. But they are uh panther shifters in this series he's gonna be like oh no your family is absolutely not treating you like that um and i'm gonna take care of you and they're gonna have to go through me and he does that he does that black love shifters paranormal low angst low conflict it's good <laughs> then no third act breakup which you know i love you know i love in fact i don't know that any of these so far have had a third act breakup yeah none of these have really had a third act breakup Maybe a little bit of something, but not like a full on breakup. Two Minute Warning by Alexander Warren. NFL football romance, if you're looking for that right now. And he is a quarterback. She is a Instagram model and influencer. Her father does bet on sports. And so that's a little bit of a conflict, but they're going to talk about that. They're not going to dance around it and they're not going to break up over it. And they're not going to do anything. They're going to communicate like they should because they owe each other that respect. And I really, really loved the way that they had some real obstacles to overcome, some legitimate things to overcome, but they did that in a healthy way. Again, this is black love. And then all of Elsie Winter's books don't have third act breakups. I recommend starting with Green Eyed Monster. I think it's really sweet. Another good starting place could be uh, Magpies and Mayhem, Vampire and Shifter. They're just, they're sweet, low conflict, funny, fancy romance books that I enjoy. Elsie Winters might not be for everyone, but she does write like exactly what I like. Then In a Jam by Kate Canterbury. This is another one where they don't want children, but he does have custody of his niece and they were actually friends and he had a huge crush on her in high school. And now she's back and he has had this major glow up, which everyone points out to him and she doesn't. And I loved that for him because people are rude. He just worships the ground she walks on and it's like, I can't fall in love with this girl again. Like I've been spending my entire adult life trying to get over her. And she is kind of going through it and has inherited a farm and needs to marry to keep it. And she's like, you know, that's not going to happen, but I'm going to live here on the farm for the year that I have it. And he's like, I'll marry you. I'll marry you. And she, you know, thinks that he's doing it for the farmland or whatever and he's like I can't believe I'm marrying my dream girl and she doesn't even think it's real. <laughs> Communication there's a couple things in this where you're like oh this is where they're gonna have like a huge fight or a breakup or a misunderstanding. No they're gonna communicate each and every time. There is a scene where they are worried about child child endangerment but the child is perfectly fine. And also, this is one of the best written children I've read in forever. She's so funny and sweet and well written. Then I have No Toxic Family. Yes. <laughs> I hate dealing with toxic family, especially when they don't stand up to them. Oh, I hate it. It stresses me out. First one is Let Me Love You, which is McLean Brothers number one by Alexandria House. This entire series follows different siblings and they are one big happy family basically they did have their issues but you're really getting the support system of the family i don't really remember what her family was like if they even were around but they are both single parents he is a rapper she is a jewelry designer and he is going to worship the ground that she walks on and do any and everything for her that he can then i have burn for me which is hidden legacy number one by alona andrews alona andrews writes the best not only families, but found families. If you want the best support system in the world, read an Alona Andrews book. And this one specifically has a really close family that will do anything for each other. This is a urban fantasy series. It's set in our world, but our world has been adapted magically in one way or another. This one specifically, there was a serum and people got magical powers or they died. It's set up in houses and you have your house and that can be, you know, your direct family members or people that you've adopted into your house or what have you. And it's kind of magical warfare in Houston, Texas. There are all sorts of rules and the houses are kind of above the normal law enforcement. However, they have their own rules and they hold each other in check. And you know, she's gonna fall in love with a dangerous billionaire, super powerful magic user who 
is going to kidnap her and take her to his basement for a minute. <laughs> I love them. I love them. And then I have I Think I Might Love You by Christina C. Jones. This is one that follows three sisters and three different novellas. This is a rom-com, a true rom-com. Some of the funniest books I've ever read. And she is a walking disaster. He is trying to avoid being collateral damage, unsuccessfully, I might add. <laughs> Again, like you have these sisters supporting each other. He has an aunt that's a little bit of a problem, but they're going to take care of that. Then lastly, so much, I have Death of a Loved One. If you're gonna kill off a beloved side character, you better mention that. But also, you know, not everyone wants to read about someone who is grieving or has recently lost with someone. So A Match Made for Thanksgiving, which is Holidays with the Wongs Number 1 by Jackie Lau. This is Canadian Thanksgiving, so it actually takes place in October, if I remember. But this is just a funny, sweet, low conflict, low angst. I love Jackie Lau's characters. I really do. This family loved them. The grandparents and the parents are so involved and they are matchmaking. And for Thanksgiving, they actually have match made for every single one of their children. They have brought a surprise date. And she was his one night stand and has been brought as a surprise date for his brother. <laughs> Grandma, I think, has been reading romance novels. And so they base all of their matches on different romance novel tropes. And it's truly hilarious. And then for each different holiday, you see another sibling finding their love. Chinese Canadian main characters, adorable. And also Jackie Lau is a foodie. If you are someone who really likes interesting food and restaurants and stuff mentioned in your books, she's the one for you. Next they have Love, Comment, and Subscribe by Kathy Yardley. This is two YouTubers actually. She is a beauty YouTuber and he is a gaming type YouTuber. He has more subscribers than she does, but he is very burnt out. They both have like a million plus, so they're big YouTubers. And she is not where she wants to be and she plays it very safe. Even though they are both very successful YouTubers, they are actually friends from high school. They were in the same nerdy kind of outcast friend group. And she is kind of an unlikable character in some ways. And I think that she's written really, really well because you see her truly go on a growth journey and you feel for her. You understand why she is the way that she is and you understand the way that he is as well. But it's understandable. It's understandable why they have this breakup and why they are having this conflict. And I'm just really happy that they realistically get past it and grow from it. And I loved how much better they made each other's lives. Truly. So good. I will tear off just thinking about it. The last one is Evil Twin by Katie Wilde. This one is, he is the general, his brother is the king, his mother made him promise that he wouldn't kill his brother. And so because of that, he views himself as a terrible person because his own parent was like, you need to not kill your brother. And also he would kind of love to kill his brother. His brother's the worst, he's so annoying. So his plan is he's going to stop being the general for his brother. He's going to seduce his brother's bride and they're going to find out that he slept with her. And because of that, he's going to have to marry her and then he'll just rule her kingdom instead. Easy peasy. No problemo. And his plan works and then he has to deal with the repercussions of this. This had such interesting conversations about human nature and human perception. I will say that the main character has kind of faced some abuse, trying to cast the demons out of her, that type of thing, you know, but not gonna happen on his watch. Not gonna happen. And the two of them are going to, you know, rule the world. <laughs> I love them. I love them. I love them, Your Honor. That's it. Those are my recommendations for if you're specifically trying to avoid these things. Completely understandable. Honestly, things that we have in common. You know, if you have a recommendation that you're like, this this book made me so happy specifically because it doesn't include this thing, which we often fall into, definitely leave it in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.